Good morning, guys. Thank you for joining me. I thought I would cover some of the news that is going on today. Uh, mostly mainstream media doesn't cover some of these other articles, little tidbits. Here where I am at in South Dakota today is probably day five or six of no birds or hardly any birds at my feeders. First, I thought maybe it was because of a storm that passed through. They stopped coming about two days before the storm, and here it's been, what, two, three days, probably three days since the storm, and still hardly any birds. So I emptied out the feeders. I gave them a thorough washing. We don't have that virus here that's been killing the birds in other states. We don't have it here. And both my son and my grandson suggested that maybe they know that Yellowstone Super Volcano is going to erupt and they're moving south. Well, that's a possibility. Anyways, the Dixie Fire. Uh, there's a video from the Sacramento Bee showing the town before Greenville burnt down. Nothing left of that town. And I believe it's only 20% contained. A college professor has been charged with starting multiple fires. He evidently worked for several universities there in California. He evidently has some mental problems, possibly bipolar. And Stephen Maynard, they say, was in the midst of an arson-setting spree. Um, they found him by tracking his GPS on his car. And also, evidently, they put some kind of tracking device on his car and were able to put him to the location of the fires um, by GPS on his phone, evidently, also. According to the Sacramento Bee, Gary Stephen Maynard, 47, is believed to have worked at a number of colleges in California, including Santa Clara University and Sonoma State University where he lectured in criminal justice studies, specializing in criminal justice, cults, and deviant behavior. Isn't that something? Chuck C Castella, who I follow on Twitter, reported that Camelia Harris discussed complete opening of the southern border with Mexican president. They're allowing the people to come across the border, and they're coming from many countries without doing COVID testing, and now we have uh, the deadly Ebola outbreak of Marburg, which is um, just like Ebola, 80% death rate in West Africa. There's somewhere around 150 cases that they're currently watching there in West Africa. He evidently died on August 2nd, and tests that just recently came in showed he died of Marburg, a highly infectious disease that causes hemorrhagic fever has a fatality rate of up to 88 percent the WHO said it's somewhere between 24 and 88 percent um, death rate for those that catch it. Marburg is the same family as the virus that causes Ebola which killed at least 11,325 people during the 2014 and 16 epidemic is believed to have originated in bats and is passed from animals to humans. It is evidently in a prefecture of Guinea. Now on the African WHO it says Marburg is transmitted to people from fruit bats and spread among humans through direct contact with bodily fluid of infected people, surfaces, and materials. Illness begins abruptly with high fever, severe headache, and malaise. Many people develop severe hemorrhagic signs within seven days, and cases uh, fatality rate have been varied from 24 to 88 percent. Now, evidently, there is no vaccine for this form of Ebola. So they're still not taking temperature checks at the airports and borders. And Camelia Harris talking with the Mexican president about completely opening up our southern border for people to come into this country. Yeah, COVID, Ebola, what could go wrong? Does she even go to the security meetings at all? We have all seen the increase in prices when we go shopping. 
Evidently, according to Fox Business, consumer inflation rose 0.5% in July. Another article I read about used cars are almost as expensive as new cars. Many of you might have heard about all the military drills that are going on. How in Michigan, um, the Air Force, I think it was, uh, landed, did tests of landing on state highways. They landed and took off on one of Michigan's highways for military aircraft. Well, evidently, also in Australia, they're setting up decontamination tents, tents in people's yards in Sydney. They got helicopters, uh, drones flying over. The town is in complete lockdown, supposedly because of the coronavirus. Issuing tickets at an extraordinary rate for anyone that's caught um, leaving their homes. So what's with these decontamination units being set up there in Sydney? I mean, look at them all. Yeah, there's a Twitter post here that I shared. It's like, what the heck is really going on? Today, August 11th, FEMA is going to do a test for the emergency broadcast system. Messages will be sent out to TVs and radios, along with cell phones that have opted in to receive the test messages. That's today. Uh, the national test will consist of two portions, testing WEA and EAS capabilities. Both tests will begin at 2.20 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time or 11.20 Pacific Standard Time today, Wednesday, August 11th. Weird. Governor Cuomo has resigned after um, alleged misconduct. Kathy Hochul will replace Governor Cuomo. Governor Cuomo uh, resignation will take place in two weeks. He evidently sexually harassed some women. Eleven so far have come forward and made these allegations against him. Yesterday, last night, um, a major storm cut power to over 179,000 people in Illinois. 154,000 in Wisconsin. Power was evidently out also in um, Iowa, I believe. Michigan, Virginia. There was wind gusts up to 77 miles an hour that brought down a lot of trees and power lines. Here's a Twitter post about power being out in Michigan. Here for ConsumerEnergy.com, they have um, a map of the areas where the power is out. 2,882 outages affecting 174,916 homes, I guess. And, of course, businesses. I believe this is Illinois for the power outages. 2,066 outages affecting 84,676 people in just this location right now. Yeah, this would include Chicago. Let me try and zoom in a little bit more. And the surrounding areas. There you go. Like I said, we had a storm go through here. And it just poured and poured and went through uh, Minnesota. Recently, um, just got a Blue Yeti 2000 watt. Uh, solar battery charger backup system. It was spendy. You got to figure you're spending about a dollar per watt for some of these um, systems for power backup, power solar generators. But it's big enough to run my refrigerator, my freezers, my televisions, air conditioners, all my larger appliances. We've never lost power here in South Dakota, but I believe in redundancy. I also have a gas-powered generator that I bought, oh, probably seven years ago, I suppose. And then supposedly a never-before-seen virus 
uh, may be striking the dolphin population there in Hawaii. That was posted on iflscience.com. It evidently is the mobilibrious virus. It's the uh, same gene virus that causes measles in humans, distemper in dogs and cats, and rider pest in cattle. In 2013, there was an outbreak there in the Southern Pacific, leading to the death of 50 dolphins in Western Australia and 200 in Brazil. ScienceDirect.com shows how this virus can affect different animals. And down here, yeah, we got the dolphins, we got cats, foxes, dogs, seals, uh, cattle, goats, sheep, camels, lions, etc. Now, according to that article, the human form is related to a number of animal strains. Similar viruses have been isolated from seals of other species, dolphins, and por porpoises, and equine. Morabilis virus has reappeared that apparently had been tra uh, transmitted to a man in contact uh, fatally in one case, it says. So I think about all these people out there swimming with the dolphins, and there has been one case where a human did contract this virus and died from it. So that's some of the stuff that I've shared on Twitter. What are your thoughts about the latest news? Yeah, what's going on with the animals? Like I said, I still don't have the birds coming to my feeder. Dolphins dying of viruses. Open borders and now the threat of Ebola, a type of Ebola. What are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Please stay safe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you.